Pepe, start her up, buddy, and let us get ready for a fun, fun night. Some inside Star Citizen review and some after party. Guys, you represent the night. They're coming in. They're coming in. Gonna be glad. Look at this man. Thank you, Wind Lord. Starting it out the right way. Wind Lord, you are a beast of a man. Thank you for those five gifts, dude. Those community subs, dude. This is it. It's the Inside Star Citizen Review. And I wanted to start out with a very special announcement. We had a love fest here before the Inside Star Citizen Review on the stream. This is the official right now announcement. And you will see the video coming up on Saturday. Thanks to Grizz here. We're calling him Saint Grizz in chat. He is he has been amazing. He was the one who had benefactor for the 890 jump last month. And now this is what we got in October. And look at this. An RSI Orion. So the official announcement when we start, this is the way you start out. This is the way you start out. <laughs> A video here is you make an announcement for an amazing ship. So for October. On Saturday, you will see the official video where I say, hey, we are giving away an RSI Orion. Thanks to St. Grizz here. <laughs> and, you know, if you want supporter prizes, just become a patron or a YouTube member. Support the community and you guys can uh, be a part of automatic. Uh, your names are entered automatically for giveaways. And we do have general prizes for, for everyone as well, like $100 Amazon gift cards and more. This is fantastic thank you so much i'm calling him saint grizz <laughs> saint grizz is here he's better than santa claus <laughs> so thank you very much for grizz uh doing this we really thank you man it is it is very positive it is a, is a wonderful thing and it helps grow the community you can already tell even from the 890 jump the amount of progress that we made just because people found us and they said wow this is actually a fun place to be and a fun place to hang out so thank you without further ado let's watch some inside star citizen this is a very, very exciting episode for me because they're introducing bombs to the verse. I want to see what this is all about. And look at this, man. We are going to be having a crazy night tonight. I feel like we are going to be having... What's up, Subliminal? How you doing, buddy? Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Look at Subliminal coming in like a boss with 122 fucking citizens. We love you, dude. This man... I actually love Subliminal's content, by the way. If you guys aren't subscribed to Subliminal, go over there right now. His his content's actually very, very in-depth and very good. Always thorough. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Welcome. Everybody, come join us. We're going to uh, watch the Inside Star Citizen show. We have a show called Inside Star Citizen Review. Sit down, relax. Do whatever you need to do to have a good time. That's what we're all about. And uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. With bombs, we're trying to create that element of excitement. There's an offense and there's a defense strategy. And bombs give a really kind of mental way to kind of start that battle. Dude, that is badass. Like, I, like this is the way I feel inside about this episode. <laughs> like, like everything I just saw right there in those five seconds is everything I'm feeling inside of my body with all parts of my my soul. I feel like I've had a soul explosion. <laughs> like, this is exactly what I've been looking for. I love explosions. I think people that have been, <laughs> been with me for a very long time understand that I, I love explosions. This makes me so, so excited in my no-no spot. So very excited. It's, it's a, it's a no-no spot overload, right, dude? So if you go to a particular location on the map, let's say, and you bring some friends, you know, they basically set up a tank around an area. You know, we want players to be able to attack that. 
so they've got a reason to defend it. There's also the NPC side, which is we've got bases now with the ability to have ground turrets on them. And these can include guns, but also missiles as well. And they can be quite effective at kind of keeping players out. But we want something to counter that. And a way to counter that as a rather fundamental force is a very large bomb, which can kind of push through some of those defenses. And give All right, it's time for our slow mo. Like we do this once. We, this is a new, uh, new section of the Inside Star System review where we do a slow mo on on certain parts that get our interest here. So I, I'm seeing the bomb drop. I think this is time. Pepe, can you please uh, get to the slow mo on this, please? Put it on slow mo, please. Let's let's watch this in slow motion, everybody. Which can kind of push through some of the defenses and give players the other advantage, which is you can come in, you can bring your big ship in, you can... Yeah, you know. <laughs> all right, all right. That, that has been your slow-mo on the Inside Star Citizen review. That is your slow-mo moment on the Inside Star Citizen review, something brought up by our fans here, and I think that is something we will keep doing on every episode. We did it early this time. Last time we did the end of the show. This one, this one You can bomb beginning. some of the early defenses, and then you can use some of your smaller ships that you have with you, you know, to kind of get in there and to take that ground location away from them. We wanted bombs to come in with a really big impact. We wanted a big ship that could carry a big bomb you know, the A2 <laughs> carrying the size 10, it basically, you know, allowed us to do that. We didn't want a guided bomb or anything like that. We wanted to give you like a high tech solution to the targeting. So, you know, although you've got this massive, powerful bomb. Oh my God, We yes. wanted there to be some skill in trying to hit the target oh with it. Oh my God. Can we, yes, yes. So we put bombs in operator mode, um, which is very, very Okay, I know this is I know this is gonna get buffed. I know me but by me saying this, a lot of care bears are gonna cry. But like, I want tactical nukes. Can I just say that? I know we just I know we have bombs now, but did you see how I just jumped way ahead? Like we we went from like these bombs and I went to like tactical nukes. Like that's that's probably never gonna happen. Let me just cry for a second. Let me just cry. Hold on, sad moment. I don't think we're ever gonna have tactical nukes. All right. <laughs> Planet Killer says Wolf. <laughs> Similar to missiles, apart from when you have bombs selected on your ship, you will get your bomb UI. We've got the visual space in front of you, which allows you to see where your bomb will drop if you drop it at any point. But we've also given you an option to create a reference What's point. What's up, Uno? Long time no see, buddy. Good to see allow you, man. the UI on the hood itself to tell you where to move to. What? Did you see what St. Grizz did for Killian? He's been a long-term member here, and, and St. Grizz just hooked up Killian with a standalone Ballista Dune Stalker Limited Edition. What? <laughs> what? Listen to me. Grizz, Grizz, is, Grizz has a lot in store for us, by the way. St. Grizz has a lot in store. By the way, if you're here for some subliminal and you're watching now and you didn't leave, congratulations. You know why? Because we are giving away an Orion. We are giving away an Orion here in October. And this is all due to St. Grizz, our beautiful benefactor here. We love St. Grizz. St. Grizz is the new Santa Claus here of DG360. <laughs> sir says, no, DG. That Let's Care Bear and more would break the game, says Sir. Okay, okay, Sir. All right, dude. I hear you, dude. St. Jizz, yeah. More, more, that's actually probably more accurate. That's probably more accurate there. <laughs> and then when you're flying towards this, it'll tell you whether you move to the You're, need to you're speed not just up, a guy. Like I said, and, right. and then as you move Superman towards Superman is not it, just a guy, circle. Grizz. Um, and this gives you the reference point of where the bomb's going to drop. And then if you get it right, and if you get the time. Um, I got some people asking me, Kudo, he says, what do you need to enter the draw? You can be a $1 patron and your name's automatically entered like every single month, Kudo. Uh, or you can be a member on YouTube uh, and you're just automatically entered, buddy. And if if you're like, F, F that, I don't want to do that, then don't worry because we still have like general prizes, like $100 Amazon gift cards and stuff like that, man. So, you know, like if you're like, I don't want to do that, that's bullshit. Don't worry about it because like you could just... 
join our regular giveaways and we still give out like hundred dollar gift cards and stuff of that nature. Like we are always doing like great giveaways here. And I, I, I personally like to do it just to bring new people in and just like get them to chill out and realize that like really there's a very simple ingredient for me as a content creator and as a streamer. Here's my one lesson and rule for other people that want to do this. There's only one thing you need to do. Have fun. <laughs> Like just have a good time. Like it, like so many, so many people just like overlook that. So many people overlook that and create a great community, create a great community. We have one of the best. Right. Depending on physics and if you've got any wind or anything that could affect it in the time as well. Welcome to it the fan, Michael. drop within that um, point that you've referenced. But in some future patches, we're looking at, you know, supporting a full bombing station on the year two, for example. Um, and this can include things like, you know, a remote camera looking down at the bomb, which will hopefully, What's up, in terms of our goals with this, is to move the advantage from the pilot being the person that controls so the bomb to the bomber um, station, you know, because we want people to have these roles on these ships, um, you know, that really make a difference. Oh, what? So, yes. you know, even if you're not within the blast radius of the bomb, you've 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 still got a chance of damaging and hurting players within the vicinity. Of the hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I need I need to watch all of that. Again. These ships, um, you know, that really make a difference. <laughs> so, you know, even if you're not within the blast radius of the bomb, you've 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 still got a chance of yeah. damaging and hurting players within the vicinity. For the physical blast I have to watch well, that so. yet again. I have to watch that yet again. This is a very good episode. You see, this is the secret. Jared is starting to understand me. Uh, Jared watches these every once in a while. He understands, you know, like, hey, like, I should watch the Inside Star Citizen Review. See what the kind of temperature is. See what people are wanting. I've always said this, and I think Jared is starting to pick it up. I love explosions. What's up, Bricks? How you doing, buddy? Now, I feel like Jared really took us seriously this time <laughs> because this, yes, that, you know, that's, you've got to be quite careful because it's quite a big radius. Um, we'll do two slow-mos so when, hold on, sure really we're going we're gonna to do two slow-mos. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. I agree because this is the last one and then we go to a hiatus, two slow-mo moments just for you, Wind. I think when you were the the impetus, I think you were the origin behind the slow mo of the week uh, for the Inside Star Citizen. Slow mo, here we go. Pepe played in slow mo. Difference. So you know, <laughs> there we go. Unique. There we go. Slow mo two. We got two slow mos on that one. Two slow mos. Oh, not that within was the nice. blast radius nice. of the bomb. Nice. You, nice. you, you still got a chance of damaging and hurting players within the vicinity. Damon's like trying to direct. He's like, listen, listen, listen. Well. So <laughs> Damon's like, listen, listen, DG. If you want to do this right, you, you gotta just slow it all down. There should be no sound. I think sometimes though, the sound like, like you know, on your songs, how you put them half speed, Damon. Like you know, like that's what makes them brilliant. I think that the brilliance is in the slow kind of uh, sound that we get from that. So there's 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 that auditory kind of vibe. You you see what I'm saying, Damon? You get what I'm saying, dude? That's you know that's you got to be quite careful because it's quite a big radius. Um, slow blown away. So make sure you release it at the right time. But apart from that, that is have amazing. Fun stuff up. That is going to be the thumbnail. Remind me. This is this this is going to be the thumbnail. That is the thumbnail for the Inside Star Citizen review today. When you see this hit the YouTube channel, that is the fucking thumbnail right there. That is beautiful. Apart from that, have fun blowing stuff up. Yeah, baby. This first iteration of bombing aims to bring functionality to the upcoming Hercules A2. And like all features, we'll continue to evolve and iterate with testing and feedback from you before rolling out to other spacecraft that can make use of this potentially devastating new feature. And speaking of the Hercules A2, it's set to arrive in the upcoming Alpha 315, so let's go ahead and take the last few minutes of this quarter's last episode to take one more look at what all is making its way to the Persistent Universe in the Patch Report.
Let's begin right at the very top of the list. Alpha 315 is more than just another quarterly patch. When this one drops, it'll be the biggest step yet in realizing that vision of death of a spaceman set forth at the very beginning of the crowdfunding campaign. And that begins with everything under the umbrella of healing tier zero. It starts with the addition of down states. No longer will every ding and scrape a player gets send them directly to death. These Trapal, that's hilarious, dude. We talked about this today. Go to the channel. We talked about regeneration. We talked about the lore behind regeneration. We talked about the complexity that is going to be added into every single profession. We talked about exactly why that is important. Because we don't want a game where we just click on a fucking book and skill that, you know, skill it for God knows how many hours or days or months. And then, oh, we can magically do this. We can magically heal by buying a skill book. And listen to me. I love Eve. I love games that, like, you know, have that kind of game mechanics into them. I'm not trying to, like, put those games down. But at the same time, I wanted something different. And the reason why I funded Star Citizen is because I wanted realism. I wanted the realism. I love that they're adding complexity. They're, they're literally layering in more and more kind of skill-based game mechanics into every profession, which requires you to learn those things to, to be proficient. I love that. That is why I love Star Citizen. That is absolutely why I love Star Citizen. These downstates allow for and encourage group participation. Eve so has one of the best trading systems ever, the best economy Picking ever in a game. And pushing forward in my like it's Black Friday and the store just got 3090s back in stock. And when they are picked up, players may discover new injury states like broken arms and legs that impair their ability to fly like or otherwise traverse the universe. And that's where the healing namesake of the feature comes in, with the ability to administer treatment to players and NPCs alike. It'll be a big change to life in the verse, certainly not one that makes life any easier for our spacefaring adventurers. But this challenge and others coming down the road should lead <laughs> to a more complex and rewarding gameplay experience for all when all is said and done. Oh, and thank speaking you, of challenging Ostentatious. experiences, thank you. the new inventory revamp is here. The new inventory revamp is here. With the death of global inventory and the implementation of local to vehicle to external to personal inventory, the planning, considerations, and ultimately choices we make as players have never been more important or impactful to our game. I like that. You know, I think the more that they show, I, I do think that this is going to be something that will be improved upon as well. The only, the only criticism I have, and it's constructive, is that I'm not quite sure I like the fact that like if i am killing and looting that somebody who is 25 or 30 or 50 feet away from me can pull up magic windows and then take things that i have killed people that i have killed and take that loot and pull it into their own inventory ui window that's one thing that i'm not quite sure what is happening right there i think that should be a spectrum post i think there should be much more clarity and and, and i think that that the, the, there has to be a deep dive into uh, what is going to happen with this, basically, this inventory new UI system? Uh, on the on the surface, the only thing I have to worry about is, like, on a security-based level. That's really it, you know? And, and I think that these issues will be addressed as time goes, uh, a, a, as development and time is it moves forward. So, you know, like, I'm not too concerned about it. But I do... I. I, I want there to be realism, but I also want there to be um, like an ease of use as well, like a balance between ease of use and realism. You know, like there, that is the balance that I am concerned about. So like I know like a lot of people got upset when I started talking about this because I, initially I didn't know what to think about this. Like initially I was kind of more worried on a security base, even though like I'm more piratey. I was I was kind of like worried because like as an alpha wolf like you know the 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 number one rule is as an alpha wolf is you 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 take what you kill like you kill it you you get first dibs and like 
I start to get worried because I'm like, well, if like Phil over there is pulling up his magic window and I kill this motherfucker right here and I and, and, and then he just pulls up a window and he's like 30, 40 feet away and he just takes all his the, the loot from this dude that I just killed. Then I kind of have a little bit of an issue like that. And some people were like, oh, DG, I can't believe you're talking about this. I, 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 I can't believe you're talking about this. Like, wh- what are you, a Care Bear? And it's not like a Care Bear mentality. It's just like it, it's a game mechanic that I'm concerned about. You know, like I've definitely been involved in game development for five, six years on a lot of different types of games. And, you know, that is something I think is important to have a really deep talk on what exactly the mechanics are with this new UI. And I think it hasn't been talked about enough. And I think there does need to be some uh, clarity on the issue. Gameplay experience. What's my stash like? on? I agree, Wind. I actually agree, Wind. Do I have ammo on Microtech to do what I want to do? What planet did I leave my multitude on? Did I leave my keys in here? As with healing, tactical decisions are now coming to the forefront of life in the persistent universe. And between the two, who and what you bring that with you cool. becomes the essential question before any new mission or adventure. But two other new features arrive with Alpha 315 to help with your inventory needs. The first being the Knickknacks Asset Manager, essential to helping you track and maintain where everything you have in the verse is stashed or located, and loot generation to help when you find yourself alone in the barren wastelands of Hurston or the magnificent desolation of Yila. Loot generation works with the external inventory system to give players more reward for their increased risk in the field. And it's just one more way Alpha 315 looks to reshape daily life in the persistent universe from this point forward. And when we talk about increased risk in the field, we have to include the new infiltrate and defend missions with new tactically based objectives like having to avoid security for completion or attacking players can't kill any defenders or classic defend objectives like repel all waves or prevent the destruction of an item or person. These new mission types have a variety of modifiers to keep things fresh and will continue to evolve beyond their initial implementation in the upcoming Alpha 315. That's nice. Of course, if increased risk in the field isn't your thing, you can take to the skies above in the new Hercules A2 from Crusader Industries. First vehicle of its kind to use the new bombing mechanics showcased earlier. Yes, and that is great. You know, this really is going to make people think about the Hercules a little bit differently. (laughs) <laughs> like that like that is really interesting you know I, I a lot of people are going to be upset about it i think personally it's like what's the issue i've actually seen people starting to flame it like i actually started to see people flaming it like the hercules and the bombing and all that shit and i'm like why would you do that it doesn't make any sense to me that you would flame that it's, it's like nonsensical sometimes i think people are just completely brain dead you know like it doesn't make sense to me to safely deliver death and destruction from far above the chaos below. Plus, the A2 just <laughs> looks cool when it makes the big boom boom. In 315, it joins it its C2 boom boom. and M2 brethren to complete the Hercules line of stunning behemoth monsters from Crusader Industries. Of course, a how question, safe the Hercules yeah, I mean, might like be up in the skies sure. might depend on two additional ships coming later in the Alpha 315 branch cycle including the airy starfighter and redeemer whether they attack or defend they will certainly be looking to bring the pain when they arrive and we'll be talking more about these two <laughs> in depth when we get closer to their intended release during alpha 315's intergalactic aerospace expo event I like that outside the precision universe or perhaps deep inside in the fictional game within a game Arena Commander's Broken Moon map is getting a makeover with new tech and features that have come online since the original was first introduced. All right, all right, great and great, but like Theories of War, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like I feel like, okay, I'm going to have a little rant here. You know, like I, I start to think about like the the, the department and uh, the inner workings of Cloud Imperium games. Like, give, like I, I feel like focus needs to divert from Arena Commander. I feel like this is old. I want I want more focus. Like if you're working on Arena Commander, why aren't you working on theaters of war? Like would you just fucking like just like Arena Commander was so like 3.0 and below. Like to me, Arena Commander was 3.0 and below. Am, am I the only one that feels that way? Am I the only one that feels that way? 
Like, I, I feel like Arena Commander was like 3.0 below. Like, why aren't the people who are working on Arena Commander switched over to fucking Theaters of War? Like, just, just take the people who are working on Arena Commander, it's nonsensical, and take those people and add them to the people who are working on Theaters of War. Am I, am I wrong? I, found, I, I feel like I'm ranting for nothing. I feel like I'm ranting for nothing. <laughs> you know, like, I'm all right, right. Including a more diverse and expensive like, map space why are people and still, an improved scoreboard. Why are people still on Arena Commander? I, I, what, what is going on with Arena Commander? Why can we not get people who are dedicating their work towards uh, towards um, Arena Commander and Star Marine? Take the take the people. Okay, here here's my here here's constructive criticism. Jared, Chris, okay, some of the devs. I know Johnny out there who who comes in every once in a while who's a dev. Okay, I'm not being an asshole here. I am being like the most constructive people. We have plenty of people on SIG that come over here. They watch the show. All right, listen to me. I just say it like it is. I'm off the cuff. I'm just going with my gut here. I'm going top of the head. And I'm saying this, guys, because I know somebody's going to watch this over there. Why don't we have the people who are working on Arena Commander and Star Marine? Why don't we have those people re take those people and put them on theaters of war? What is the point of Arena Commander and what is the point of Star Marine if we're going to have theaters of war? Like, is, am I wrong? Am I wrong? I feel like that's a managerial decision. I feel like somebody isn't putting the, I feel like somebody is not connecting the dots the correct way. Am I wrong? <laughs> like, I, I'm asking you guys. Listen, this is why I love the Inside Star Citizen Review. Like, there are times where I have these. Like, I don't, I'm not even quite sure. Like, Ostentatious, right, dude. Like, this is why I'm asking this. Right, Ostentatious is like, does Arena Commander even have a team? Like, what's going on? Like, I'm not quite sure. But if there are teams assigned to Arena, uh, to Arena Commander, if there are teams assigned to uh, Star Marine, I feel like they need to be reallocated towards Theaters of War. I think the data and everything that we're trying to get off of Theaters of War when it comes to battles and FPS and, uh, you know, like I think uh, server meshing, those those very uh, important data sets will be gathered through Theaters of War. So why aren't we taking the people that are dedicated towards this work and just saying, fuck this push it to theaters of war am i am i wrong uh gray cryola says i disagree i would like to hear why you disagree actually i would actually love to hear why you disagree i love gray cry by the way uh uh <laughs> it was like my immersion <laughs> like this is a very real like you know these are the things i think that could speed up you know the progress that's that's my two cents UI created in building blocks for faster performance and improved maintenance ability going forward. Flash. No. Right, right, right. Windlord's saying Toe is more of a team to get together with more players, whereas AC is uh, quick in and play and train. Yep, yep. Uh, Brixie's saying you should be able to play AC, SM, and Toe from within the game. Yeah, and, and my thing is this, Brix, and, and here's the thing I'm saying, Brix, is like to me, I feel as if uh, Arena Commander and Star Marine, uh, essentially the evolution of it is Theaters of War. So I'm saying AC plus SM equal TOW. Let me write that in there. Let me just so people understand what I'm saying. AC plus, this is a very important, I, I think that uh, Einstein had this equation here, but I'm just going to write it down here. AC plus SM equal T-O-W. Am I, am I wrong on that equation? I'm getting very, very brainy here. But, I but you know, like, people aren't aren't really... <laughs> Dude, it's going to be both. Am I wrong on the equation? I don't think I'm wrong on the equation. 
<laughs> Wait, are we starting a meme here? <laughs> this is why I love this. Thursday is my favorite day with you guys. You motherfuckers, I love you guys that are sitting here chilling out with me. Listen, you know what I really love? I love that Subliminal will like hit us with like a whole bunch of people, right? And we were at like 30 viewers, right? And we had like over 100. And you notice like we're around 60 now. We'll probably go down a little bit. But the people that stuck around from Subliminal stream are actually like, dude, I'm having a really good time here. That's how you gain that momentum. That's how you gain. I'm going to thank Subliminal, by the way. So if you guys are watching for Subliminal, uh, he's a cool dude. And the people that stuck around here, dude, welcome. Welcome. Welcome to the beauty. The beauty. <laughs> oh, my God. Chris, thank you. Chris, thank you, dude. I don't know if something's going on with the alerts, but thank you, dude. I saw that. Of course, that. back in the look persistent at this. universe. Look at this, man. Let's look at all the new places you'll go in Another Alpha 315, 50 Saint, including the Saint new Crusader Grizz. showroom on Horizon. Crown Jewel Showcase Pepe, of the what's going entire on with the alerts Crusader over ship there? line. It's your one-stop <laughs> shop so for the best-looking spacecraft in the galaxy, where you can pick up the Mercury and Hercules right away, <laughs> Ares when it comes online later in Alpha 315, and then one day, my favorite ship in the galaxy, the Genesis Starliner. <laughs> so, Pepe! Thank you, Grizz. Then again, Say, Grizz, I, saw, around and I think you're spaceships. breaking it. I think you're breaking That's the alerts, That's where Cousin Grizz. Crows comes in. Also new to Orison, where players <laughs> will get the chance to the trick show. out their spacecraft with new components and libraries. Well, we'll talk about what else when we get closer to getting there. But Cousin Crows, welcome to the verse. And in places you may want to avoid going, the variety of hospitals and space clinics arrive in Alpha 315 <laughs> to put players back together when the worst of the worst occurs. These include new locations on Crusader, Microtech, Grimhex, and a variety of smaller installations and space stations throughout the Stanton system. Look at this. This is amazing. Killian, Grizz, thank you so much for the donations. Pepe, get on the ball. What is going on with the alerts, man? Do you need to refresh something? Hold on a second. Let me make sure, like, what is going on here? This needs to be fixed, like, ASAP here. Hold on one moment for, for a moment, if you will. Let me look at the uh, URL here, and let me make sure that we're copying the uh, correct uh, URL. And it looks to me like... Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Let's see here. I'm I'm doing something very very technical at the moment. Let's see. Put it on this page, and I'm trying to get this so that these alerts are showing up here. This is a little bit upsetting. <laughs> like I want alerts, Pepe. Why am I doing all the technical work, Pepe? You know better than this. God damn it, Pepe. Get the show back on the road here. Oh my goodness. Let's save, save the settings, Pepe. Go to the, oh, Pepe. <laughs> Pepe's what getting we me very week? upset tonight. Well, we learned that it's better to be the bomber These than the bomber. beautiful. That hospitals aren't. Pepe, these beautiful members of our community are donating to us, and there needs to be alerts up here, Pepe. You're dropping the ball, Pepe. You know, you can go, you can go back home. Don't don't give me lip. No, my mustache is better than yours. My butt. Mm, this man, he's he's ridiculing me. Pepe. A nice place to visit, but you wouldn't want to live there. Although players like me probably will anyway. He's he's and talking back. He is talking back. Alpha three fifteen's new healing inventory and loot <laughs> mechanics will make this patch unlike <laughs> any other that's come before it. He now is that's talking all for back our tonight. I see this quarter as we go into that is not prep acceptable for our behavior, shows, Pepe. And especially the upcoming Digital Citizen Con on October 9th, where you can join us in once again taking a look at the future of Star Citizen. Check out the recently launched CitizenCon.com for more details. We Until are going to have a blast at CitizenCon. Are you guys Citizen ready for CitizenCon? I'm hanging out with you guys all day long. Listen to me. I have tried and tried and tried to tell everybody that is in my direct real life that I will not be bothered on Citizen Con Day 
So I am setting this time aside for you guys, and we are going to have a blast. If you're watching on YouTube, because this will be shipped over there, you better smash that like button and break that algorithm. You are part of the DG360 Army. We are having an Orion giveaway. Thank you, St. Grizz. If you're here live, you're in for something special because we are not done yet. We are going to have an after party. And if you missed us, if you missed us on the stream and you're not here for that first level energy, I am so sorry for you. There is a sadness in my heart. My heart is breaking because we are going to have so much fun and you're missing it. And I got on early for my EU audience. This is my EU love. I, I generally go a little bit late, but every once in a while I'll go early because I realize like the fam is global. It is global. I cannot just say, hey, here's a time slot I need to be in. No, 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 no. I need to be available for the entire global family. I will not forget about you, EU. You are very important and integral to the DG360 community. And you never forget that. You never forget it, Pepe. You better switch me over. And we better get ready for that after party. Let's do it.